Hello everyone, Scott here, and today we're going to do morning prayer. Uh, I've had a few people who've been curious about how I use the Book of Common Prayer, and the, specifically the 1928 is the one I use, that's this. And the biggest thing is I do uh, morning prayer with it pretty much every morning. Uh, but on Sundays in particular, I do a longer form, and that's what we're going to see today. I'm just going to go through the whole thing, so this will be long, but maybe someone will find it helpful. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not Anglican, never have been, and the way I do things with this prayer book may not reflect well how, like, uh, proper Anglican usage, but uh, it, it's how I do it. I use a few things in addition to it. Now, the one thing you have to have is you got to have a Bible so that you can do the scripture readings. And I do prefer to use King James Bible, which is very traditional with the older prayer books. I like to use the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible. I have a hard copy edition right here. And it's also available in a paperback, although it's, it's just called The Bible from Penguin. And this is a very affordable uh, option. I think I got this one used. I think I paid a total of maybe $14 for it. But uh, I'll use both of these so you can see them in case you're curious about this edition. I like it. It's a nice layout. It's a single column paragraph format. Uh, it includes quotation marks, which you don't get usually with King James. I just find it, it makes it a little bit easier for me to read from the King James. Uh, I do occasionally include prayers from other prayer books. I'm going to use a prayer from this Catholic prayer book, so you can see that. And I'll probably include one from this Prayers Ancient and Modern as well. And then the last thing that I utilize when I do morning prayer, uh, which I won't show in this video, is uh, sometimes some of the readings, especially when I'm reading them in the King James, I might want to read it in another translation to help me understand it. And uh, I use usually the NLT to do that so that I have something that's a little more paraphrased, uh, more easier to read. So let's get started. As I go through, I may offer some commentary here and there. Uh, some of it, though, will probably be in captions or something because uh, I don't want to interrupt things too much. So the first thing you got to do is you got to find your place in the liturgy, in the calendar. And today, what I'm doing this is the fourth Sunday in Advent. There's two options for the reading today. We have, for the fourth Sunday in Advent, I'm going to do the first line just because it has a lot more readings in Isaiah, and that sounds good to me. I'm, I'm not sure how you should best choose which you'll do, but I just kind of go with what I feel like doing, and that's what I feel like. I will do the psalm for the morning, Psalm 80, and I will do both the morning and evening uh, scripture readings because when I do evening prayer, I, it's usually pretty short. I will save the evening psalm for tonight. So we go to morning prayer, and you'll see I have these things. I got these book darts, which are very handy. So I've got everything marked in here so I can find them quickly. To get started, you got to find the opening sentence, and you have options for Advent. We have ones that are specified for this season. So we'll start there, and we're going to get into it. The fourth Sunday in Advent, morning prayer. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, 
to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 80 Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, show thyself, thou that sittest upon the cherubim. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up thy strength, and come and help us. Turn us again, O God, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry with thy people that prayeth? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them plenteousness of tears to drink. Thou hast made us very strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, thou God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, thou hast cast out the heathen, and planted it. Thou madest room for it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the godly cedar trees. She stretched out her branches unto the sea, and her bows unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedge, that all they that go by pluck off her grapes? The wild boar out of the woods doth root it up, and the wild beasts of the field devour it. Turn thee again, thou God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold, and visit this vine, and the place of the vineyard that thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest so strong for thyself. It is burnt with fire and cut down, and they shall perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, and upon the son of man, whom thou madest so strong for thine own self. And so will not we go back from thee. O let us live, and we shall call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So now it directs us in the rubric. We'll be reading the first lesson from the New Testament, and as I said, I will combine the morning and evening uh, lessons. And I, I think I just said New Testament, I mean Old Testament. A reading from the fortieth chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing, and vanity. To whom then will ye liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, their stalks shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Who sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Here endeth the first lesson. After the first lesson, I then jump right to the second lesson. Uh, I don't do any of the hymns here. If I could sing beautifully, perhaps I would. Here we are at the second lesson. A reading from the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, 
Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests. The word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth, and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. A reading from the third chapter of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians, starting at verse 7. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another, and towards all men, even as we do towards you. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Here ends the second lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may this reading of your Holy Scripture strengthen us, help us to grow in our relationship with you. May it affect not just our minds, but our hearts as well, directing us in how we live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. This brings us to the collects, which we have to find uh, elsewhere in the book, and I don't have them marked well. I need to put another bookmark in here. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O blessed Lord, who has commanded us to love one another, grant us grace that, having received thine undeserved bounty, we may love every one in thee and for thee. We implore thy clemency for all, but especially for the friends whom thy love has given to us. Love thou them, O thou fountain of love, and make them to love thee with all their heart, that they may will and speak and do those things only which are pleasing to thee. Amen. Lord, thank you for this day that you have set before us. As we go about our day, in all the places we go and in all the things we do. Remind us that you are always with us. We are ever in your presence. And grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may live accordingly, that he may guide our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, that we may do the things you command and turn from those things which are not of you and not of your kingdom. Let us approach others in love, mercy, compassion, kindness, caring, forgiveness. Let us turn from anger, strife, jealousy, hatred, selfishness. Let our lives reflect Christ in the world, that we may draw others to Jesus, to make him known, and to show the love to others that we have received from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, that's basically it, friends. Um, I did, I do realize I forgot I was going to do a prayer from here earlier, and I forgot. So we'll just go ahead and I'll share that now. 
This is just a prayer I like to do sometimes when I'm uh, opening in prayer, and I have a book dart, and I still managed to miss my spot. There we go. I, I love this um, prayer for inner silence here, and I like to start with it sometimes, but we'll go ahead and pray it now. O Christ my Lord, I pray that you will turn my heart to you in the depths of my being, where with the noise of creatures silenced and the clamor of bothersome thoughts stilled, I shall stay with you where I find you, always present. Amen. Anyways, that's how I do morning prayer on Sundays. Again, as I said earlier, I'm not an Anglican. This is not meant to represent a proper Anglican prayer service. It's just how I use the Book of Common Prayer myself. And uh, I am grateful to God that this tradition, the prayers in here have been carried down over so many hundreds of years so that I may use them and benefit from them in my time with God. I thank you for joining me this morning. I, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope it was a, a decent. I think my reading of Isaiah um, maybe wasn't that great. I was a little too worried about saying things right, so uh, that probably was a bit flat, but I'm, I'm not a priest, so I did the best I could. But anyways, I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts or like to share anything about uh, the Book of Common Prayer or how you do your morning prayers. Please do so in the comments below. As always, I invite you to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos, different things I do. Please give it a like if you found it helpful or useful. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll see you for the next one.